This video is the second part of our look at how a knowledge of mortgages might affect how designers and architects choose materials and technology during the design process. If you haven't watched the first part, then I suggest that you go there first. In the first part of this lecture, we covered, in a very basic way, what a mortgage is. And we suggested that mortgage lenders might be risk averse when it comes to types of construction. Let's look at that in a bit more detail. Typically, lenders in the UK will prefer houses where the outside walls are built of brick or stone and the roof is made of tiles or natural slate. This is referred to as standard construction. This is a pretty narrow description which significantly limits the choice of houses which are mortgageable. At the other side of standard construction we have, not surprisingly, non-standard construction. This can include houses which are steel framed, timber framed, modular or prefabricated. The concerns of a lender might be that non-standard construction houses might be more difficult to sell in the event of a repossession, or that they might require higher rates of repair and maintenance in the future, which could affect sale prices. Buildings with the structure as timber can also be seen as a fire risk. Timber frame buildings are common in Scotland, with around 83% of all new houses using this technology. But this is still a lesser used technology in the rest of the UK. Timber frame accounts for only 23% of new houses in England. For timber to be considered as a non-standard construction might be problematic. But in reality, obtaining a mortgage for a timber framed house isn't that difficult. But there are still some providers who might not be willing to take that risk. Non-standard construction also covers traditional forms of construction, such as wattle and daub and cob. Other natural materials, such as rammed earth or thatch, are also an issue, and it's likely that a client looking to build using these methods would need to secure a specialist mortgage. An architect involved in projects using these materials would be wise to check that the project can be funded before the design progresses too far. Where non-standard construction is more of an issue, is in emerging methods of construction, such as modular timber or steel construction. Mass timber or thin joint blockwork are also an issue. These modern methods of construction are often seen as being part of the solution to the housing crisis, or as being good methods of providing energy efficient building. But if they are treated as non-standard construction, then there might be issues when it comes to borrowing. Self-built projects are often projects where the boundaries of construction can be pushed and modern methods can be employed, especially where the aim is to make the building energy efficient or zero carbon. Mortgages for self-built projects usually require specialist lenders and where non-standard construction is involved, this field might be narrower. Architects and clients should also think about the future of their buildings. It can be easy to become caught up in the excitement of using a new material or construction type, but at some point in the future, that client might want to sell the building. If non-standard construction is used, then the future purchaser might not be able to secure a mortgage. Recent government studies into modern methods of construction have found them to be a useful tool in achieving housing targets. The government recognises that lending might be an issue, and have suggested that warranties might be made available to projects which could act as guarantees for lenders. Further videos in this series will look at some modern methods of construction, how the UK house builders approach design, and how professionals involved in the design process contribute. Thank you for watching. Please check out the videos listed on the end screen. I'll place links to some relevant documents in the description below and on the course page. Cheers.